Hi, how's it going? Welcome to Code with Z. In today's video, we have to find all of the numbers that are missing inside of this array. Why? Well, because that's what lead code 448, find all numbers disappeared in an array, is asking us to do. As you can see, it says, given an array called numbers, for example, this one, where nums at the index of i is in range of 1 till n. Meaning, for example, if we have an array with the length of 8, it should have all the numbers from 1 to 8. For example, this one has the length of 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it should have all the numbers from 1 all the way till 8. It doesn't have to be sorted, but it has to be inside the array. As you can see, it says from the range of 1 till n. And then we need to return an array of all of the integers in the range that we have here that do not appear. Meaning, for example, if we miss two numbers, we have to return those two numbers that do not exist here. So for example, if this is the array, we have to return 5 and 6. Why? Well, because if we check, 5 and 6 do not appear here, even though they are in the range of 1 all the way till 8, which is the length of our array. So because 5 and 6 do not appear here, we have to return them inside of an array as our missing numbers. So now let's see how we can solve this. First of all, let's call this nums like so. And then we only need one simple thing. And that's going to be a variable called missing, which is going to be the array that we're going to return at the end. And then our approach is going to be really simple and I'm going to visualize everything so you can actually see it with your own eyes. So we're going to loop through this array and we only follow one simple rule. This rule is going to be for each number that we're going to loop through, we're going to make the value at its matching position negative. Now, what does this even mean? Well, let me show you. So we're going to loop through this array. For example, the first one is going to be 4 because we're going to be looping through the array and the first element is 4, right? Whatever this value is that we're going to be looping through, we're going to find the number at the position of this value minus 1. For example, 4 minus 1 is 3. And the position with the index of 3 is going to be this one. Why? Well, because our arrays are 0 indexed. So 0, 1, 2, 3. 3. Why 3? Because the current value was 4, 4 minus 1 is 3, so we're going to find the position of 3 inside of the array. Once we find it, we're going to make the number that's at this position negative, like so. So now we have negative minus 7. And then we're going to move on with our loop. In the next round, our current number is going to be 3. Again, we're going to follow the same rule. We're going to say for each number, make the value at its matching position negative. Well, we have 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. So let's find the number with the index of 2. Well, it's going to be this one because 0, 1, 2. This position has the index of 2. Once we find the position, we're going to make the number that's there negative. Simple as that. And then we're going to move on with our loop. In the next round, we're going to have this negative 2 that we have here. We're going to treat it as positive for finding the position. So we're going to say we have 2. 2 minus 1 is going to be 1. What's the position that has the index of 1? So this is the position and we're going to make this negative. Simple as that. And then we're going to move on with the next round. In the next round, we're going to have minus 7 and we're going to treat it as 7 to find the position. 7 minus 1, that's going to be 6. The position with the index of 6 is going to be this one. We're going to make this negative and move on with our loop. In the next round, we're going to have 8. 8 minus 1 is going to be 7. The position with the index of 7 is going to be this one. And we're going to make this negative. And then we're going to keep on looping. In this round, we're going to have 2. 2 minus 1 is going to be 1. The position with the index of 1 is going to be this one. This is already negative, so we're just going to ignore it and move on with our loop. In the next round, we're going to have minus 3. We're going to treat this as 3. 3 minus 1 is going to be 2. The position with the index of 2 is going to be this one and this one is already negative so we're just going to ignore it and we're going to move on to the next round in the next round we're going to have minus one we're going to treat it as one one minus one is going to be zero and the position with the index of zero is going to be this one and we're going to turn this into negative simple as that and then we're done with all of our array now why did we do this well as you can see all of the numbers are negative besides these two spots and these two spots are going to be representing the numbers that we're missing they're going to be five and six why five and six well if we check if we actually count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. As you can see, these two spots are going to be representing the numbers that we are missing, which are 5 and 6. So we're going to loop through our array, and once we come across a positive number, we're going to follow a simple rule. We're going to say any spot that stays positive means that number, that spot is missing. So let's loop through this again. We're going to have a variable like i because we're going to be looping through this, and we're going to increment i on each round. In the first round, i is going to be equal to 0, and this is the position with the index of 0. 
Is this positive? Nope. All right, let's keep on moving. I is gonna get incremented now. I is pointing to the position with the index of one. This position has the index of one. This number is negative, it's not positive, so we're gonna keep on moving. Again, same thing, I got incremented. This number has the position of two. Is it positive? Nope, let's keep on moving. Same thing here. And once we reach this position, we're gonna check if this number is positive, it is positive indeed. So we're gonna say add i plus one to our missing array. I is gonna be four, four plus one, that's gonna be five. And if we check, five is actually missing inside of our array. And then we're gonna keep on moving forward. We're gonna check again if we have a positive number, we do. So we're gonna say, all right, add i plus one to our missing array. i is five, five plus one, that's gonna give us six. So now we have five and six. And if we check, we don't actually have six inside of this array, and this is correct. And then we're gonna keep on moving forward. Do we have a positive number? No. Do we have a positive number? No. And we're gonna be done. That's gonna be it. And then at the end, we're gonna return our missing numbers. And this is gonna be basically how we solve this. So we actually marked each position so we can find the correct number. Now let's code this in the simplest way possible. Alrighty, let's code this together. So the first thing that we need to have is gonna be our missing array, just like we saw in the slides. We're gonna have the same thing here. And then we're gonna loop through our array for the first time. We're gonna say for let's i being equal to zero, and we wanna keep on looping as long as i is smaller than nums.length, and then i plus plus on each round, we're gonna get inside of our loop, and here we're gonna get the position that we want. So to get the position, we have to get the number that we're currently looping through, so the current number. So we're gonna say const current num is equal to nums, which is gonna be our array. As you can see, nums is the array with the index of i. But we need to make sure that this is positive, so math.absolute to make sure that this is positive. So for example, once we had minus four, we also are gonna treat it as four to mark the position. And then after we've actually had the current number that we have, so for example, we have the four that we have here, we need to make sure that we're gonna mark the position with the index of four minus one as negative. So we're gonna say const mark position, is gonna be equal to current number minus one. Because for example, if we have four, we're gonna mark four minus one as negative because our array is zero indexed. And then we're gonna say, if the number at mark position is positive, we wanna make it negative. If that was not the case, meaning we've already made it negative, just like we saw in the slides, we're just gonna ignore it. So we're gonna say nums at mark position should be equal to negative nums at mark position. Simple as that. After this is done, we're gonna have our second loop. We're gonna say again for let i being equal to zero, and we wanna keep on looping as long as i is smaller than nums dot length, like so, and then i plus plus on each round. We're gonna enter our for loop, and here we're gonna check if we have a positive number. So we're gonna say if nums at the index of i is greater than zero, do the following. We want to push to our missing array, but what do we want to push? We want to push i plus one, just like we saw in the slides, because our arrays are zero indexed. And this is gonna be everything we need for the second loop, and at the end, we're gonna return our missing array. Now let's run this and see if we can actually pass the test cases that we have here, and yep, awesome. Now let's submit this and see if we can actually pass everything that we have here and yep we got accepted that's awesome thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and keep on coding